welcome back to another episode of the Level Up Podcast. James from Next Level Gaming here, joined by these two awesome gentlemen, Brandon and Nick. And we have a fantastic topic, which is a very t- uh, touchy topic for a lot of people, which is microtransactions and loot, box, loot boxes in gaming. And let's start off with the first uh, kind of little question here. Are you guys for them or against them? So, Brandon, start us off, buddy. With microtransactions in general, I mean, they're not, I don't think they're inherently bad. To a degree, I mean, loot boxes are, for me, a different story entirely, but I see no problem with developers putting out a game that they're passionate about and releasing some alternate cosmetics. I have a problem with microtransactions when they break the game, and that's more common, obviously, in like mobile titles and stuff like that that you're playing. But when, you know, they add in some armor skins or something like that, and it's a couple bucks, maybe like a dollar thirty nine or something after taxes, we don't have a problem with that. I mean, you know, they put in the hard work for their game. They wanted to go a little bit above and beyond. Maybe the intern spent a few extra hours in the office designing that armor. You don't know. But I, I definitely think, at least from myself being a completionist and, and having to go out of my way to collect all the unique things in the game, it does not hurt to have alternate skins. I know they used to be unlockable in games way back when microtransactions didn't exist, and now they're just kind of shoehorned in for a couple bucks. But if it's not game-breaking by any means, then I'm all for it, sure. Loot boxes are a different story, and okay. I hate them with a burning passion. <laughs> but they're starting to, uh, from what I can see, get phased out in favor of the ever-loving Battle Pass, which I also don't like. So. <laughs> Yeah, Battle Pass 10. I can't stand Battle Passes. <laughs> they are not the best. <laughs> it's just, it, it, it's such a broken structure where now you're rewarding your player base for continuously, essentially, please pay us to continue playing our game and we'll give you new content. But it's to the point where it's almost like you're holding me hostage because if I take time away from your game to play a different game I bought, I'm going to miss out on content that I've technically paid for. That's yeah. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Absolutely. No, I agree. I agree. Microtransactions in general, I don't have an issue with them. I tend not to go into them too deeply. But if they end up coming out and uh, they change how the game is played, or if you end up behind a paywall and you just have to pay to play, essentially, I've already spent money to play. And I don't want to spend more to pay. Right? I find like, it's okay, like I kind of like the DLC method, right? Of just um, was it spending a little extra to get some extra content? I'm okay with that, but as long as it's only cosmetic, that's where I'm okay with microtransactions. Pretty much the same as Brandon. Yeah, you don't want that uh, pay to win style, but that that's more. I guess that's it was it's with what like uh, EA did a lot of that. I know 2K's done yeah. quite a bit of that with their VC and all that stuff. But you see it a lot more in mobile games, right? Yeah, or just paid pay to win and all that. Or but I mean, <laughs> yeah, pay like to I'm, I'm with you guys on the whole microtransactions. I'm fine with it. At the end of the day, these, like you said, Brandon, these guys work hard on this game. If you, they throw it in, and you want to spend a couple bucks on a skin here or an extra weapon, or whatever it is. Then yeah, that's but that's entirely up to you. So I don't know why a lot of people complain about microtransactions. If you don't like them, then don't pay for them. Pretty simple, I, right? I, Same I, with DLC. Uh, battle passes, I think, are useless as well. That's just another way of sleep boss, I guess, uh, and having people buy them. But at the end of the day, if you're a business person and you uh, can find a way to gain some extra revenue and that it's microtransactions or it's loot boxes, then yeah, absolutely, go for it. I think people get mad at that money. money. Yeah, it's the money. But I, I think people get mad at the fact that they have the audacity to be there. Right. And yes. I agree with both of you that if devs put the work in, of course, they, it's their right to charge what they want for it. And if it's an optional thing, sure. But then it's the internet mentality of this could offend someone. So yeah. I'm going to be offended by it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, and then you run into the whole stuff with like parents, like, oh, my kid racked up my credit card for a thousand bucks on skins for Fortnite and all that stuff. <laughs> well, sorry, that's their own stupidity, first of all, <laughs> for giving access to whatever a minor, like 10, 12 year old, to your credit card. That's your fault. What do you expect? If my parents gave me their credit card when I was 10 years old, 
I don't, well, I don't know what you're buying because I never had microtransactions in games, but I'll probably be buying a lot of candy, right? But I don't know. It's just it something Pong came out when you were yeah. a child. <laughs> <laughs> I actually party po- Pokemon cards and, and Pox for me, for sure. But then again, I wouldn't even know how to use a credit card when I was like 10 years old, right? But I think it was yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh cards for us. I'm a little older than you. A little older than you, know. chance. The like I found, and I know this is again. I'm gonna reference TJ in this, and he still hasn't. You know, he's not in this episode yet. But um, Mr. TJ, I, yeah, I just miss arguing with them. <laughs> yeah, they're just so um, needed, and it's so nice. The one seasons past I've encountered that I I don't have issues with because it didn't feel like it was a time monopolization towards one game would probably be Rainbow Six's season like season pass. Oh, yeah. I completed that thing in probably a week, and sure, I, it was the only game I played for that week, admittedly. But mm-hmm. when it's supposed to be a three month thing that I can complete in a much smaller chunk of time. Whereas the COD seasons pass to fully finish without also then buying advancements in the seasons pass, yeah. it's it, it, it's hectic. Like I don't have time to sit there and exclusively play Call of Duty, either Warzone or online multiplayer, twenty four seven. Nor do I want to. I don't have you know the drive to sit and play COD anymore. I'm not fourteen years old. Like, I'm not. I don't <laughs> no, have school no offense, home or anything like that. Yeah, not with that here, you're not. not. Yeah, if I shave, I will look twelve. Granted, so that's, that's why this thing always stays. But it's uh, the, the siege seasons pass. I thought was perfect. It, it had a good balance of like every now and again you get renown boosters, which you can use to buy the cosmetics, uh, as well as unlockable cosmetics exclusive to the seasons pass. But at no point in time did it feel like it was a chore. Yeah. You know, we yeah. we played eight matches one day, maybe six matches the next day, maybe four matches the following day. And it never felt like because I didn't consecutively play eight matches each of those days, I was hindering myself in my progression. I got yeah. everything that I wanted from the season's pass. I hit the end. And for the next two and a half months after that, I didn't touch Siege. So, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's like it sounds like, uh, you know, Siege has attainable kind of DLC or microtransactions, whatever search season pass you're talking about. Um, I think Ubisoft actually does it well, like even with the division, with their season pass slash uh, battle pass that they they came out with when they dropped the uh, was it going back to New York uh, section there World for the game? New York, I think. World, yeah. yeah, World of New York. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they did well. Ubisoft did a pretty good job, but then you have our good old boys at EA and uh, and Two K <laughs> that kind of they really ran. Actually, EA's gotten a little bit better. I I play a lot of uh, NHL uh, um, mm-hmm. with the whole hockey ultimate team where you're buying the packs yeah but see i buy the i always i get the game and i always drop 50 bucks right for that and that's it build my team do my thing i know lots of people i have buddies that drop like two three hundred dollars on building their teams because of the whole like opening hockey packs and things like that maybe that's just our generation because we grew up buying hockey cards or baseball whatever it is but i know ea took flack for that same with 2k and their whole vc um but that's a little bit much with the VC because like everything on 2K is all about VC. You want to mm-hmm. upgrade your customizable player, you got to have VC. You want a pair of shorts, it's costing you five bucks. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Too crazy for me. Uh, I never dump any cash into 2K games aside from buying the game. Yeah. But, um, yeah. There's just some developers that obviously take advantage, but hey, they're making money. If you're going to keep doing it, they're going to keep putting it out. So that's basically why they're uh, they're they're in their games. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's jump into the next question because I know a lot of lawsuits recently have emerged from this. Do you think that uh, loot boxes uh, primarily, do you think loot boxes are uh, considered gambling? Like, would you consider that gambling with, with minors and gambling and, and, uh, and all that? So I don't know who wants to start chatting about that first, but. Um, I honestly, I don't consider it full out gambling, but I do get where people are coming from. It's, um, it's, you're, you're paying for chance, but the way I see it is it's not, there's no return there. The return is potentially an item, right? But then at that point, it just falls into the same thing that Overwatch used to do, right? If you're going to get a loot box, then you have a chance of getting this. If you want to pay the money, it's just a microtransaction, right? Yeah. Whereas you're not doubling your money and then trying to reinvest it back into it. That's just kind of where I'm at with that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm, I'm totally, I don't think it's gambling at all. Um, I can see where 
you know, obviously, like I was talking about parents and their kids racking up their credit card, but that's that's up to the parents. You need to monitor your children now uh, with everything available to them uh, through gaming or even just the internet in general. But like, you can't you can't give access to a credit card uh, to yeah. a minor that's going to just rack it up. And he just like, and it, like you said, it's like everything's to chance, right? What's the probability yeah. of me getting this rare item? What thirty percent? Well, yeah, they they consider that maybe like some sort of slot machine style uh uh gambling but yeah and there's no i don't know there's i don't see any disclaimers i haven't played games where i'm, I'm buying loot boxes uh, so i don't know if there is any disclaimers now in gaming where it says this is some sort of you know state of gambling uh I've never seen the age of it like is so and they won't because they're making money off of it and until they actually you know the lawsuit goes through and they get sued or they get fined or whatever it's going to be which it'll just get hung up in court for years for sure um because i know ea i think it was with yeah. fifa they were getting uh the lawsuit i'll have to look that up to to double check but yeah i don't agree i don't think it's gambling at all uh parents out there just monitor your children be smart yeah it's so it's it. it's almost like if you're gonna do that where do you start because there have been loot boxes and card packs and all this stuff in games for years now so if you're yeah, gonna yeah. sue ea okay now you have to sue blizzard as well for yeah. both Hearthstone and Overwatch. And now you're going to have to sue, um, what was it? Who else does it? Everybody. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone does it, right? I, I'm going to label it. myself here. I play Fate Grand Order on my phone. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not the JPEGs. I do, I do. <laughs> I, play, I play the JPEGs. And um, even then, right, it's the exact same thing. You want to buy a pack, you buy a pack, right? And then it even gives you the percentages of what you're likely to get in that pack. So you can be just as disappointed when it doesn't work and you have to spend $300 to get something. Yeah. I don't necessarily, so like, I, I mean, I've, I've also seen, to, to counterpoint the argument, it's not a child, this is a grown adult, um, and to, to narrow it down specifically, they're obsessed with 2K. Like, they, they love 2K. Um, and they spent, in the time that I knew them, although I knew there was more purchases before and after I associated with this person, roughly 3,000 Canadian dollars on player packs just to get a handful of players they're looking for in like the mega deluxe ultimate diamond edition card or however their tier system works in nba i don't play sports yeah. games um on principle <laughs> because i don't support these stupid things but i i will argue that it is a lot more harmful and a little bit more gambling when you're now taking you know like any any specific player like i know let's say lamello ball you want to get lamello ball in 2k right and mm -hmm. I get him, but I've only got the platinum version. And I know that if I buy that same loot box again, I have a chance of getting the same card with better stats. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. when it starts to become very cloudy. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with that kind of rendition. Where like, if I bought the pack and I get the card, I should have the card. I shouldn't then yeah, have to absolutely. continue paying to rank him up or yeah, like yeah. do overly egregious tasks in game to rank him up. Either way, yeah, like uh, that I think is a little bit too much. There are loot boxes that I agree with. Overwatch is system for loot boxes. I mean, you get loot boxes for winning matches. You get yeah. them for daily challenges. Same applies to Hearthstone. Yeah. Like, they give them out like it's candy. Yeah, exactly. So, and I, I mean, I play, I dabble. I won't say I play, but I dabble in Genshin Impact, which is uh, pretty much <laughs> Nick's version, but <laughs> a little bit more intense. No, uh, no um, judgment. <laughs> so, I, like, I, I haven't been susceptible to purchasing any loot boxes. I haven't felt the need to buy any of their roulette plays, essentially um in the game i think the bigger problem that people are having here is these games are supposed to be you know e-rated titles for the most part these games are supposed to be for everyone and when you're putting such a heavy emphasis on a market that is not really with it, their own disposable income these 10 to 12 year olds are borrowing their parents credit cards because they don't have credit cards because they don't have money uh, yeah. And on the odd chance that they have money, they're turning it into PlayStation Network dollars. They're turning it into Xbox Live currency because they want to buy those packs. They want to they want to get those players. They want to have those characters. And that's completely understandable. But the problem is, without a clear disclaimer to an audience that doesn't understand how gambling works and how their odds of winning works, 
like a Genshin Impact, and I believe Fate Grand Order does this too, when you click the info on their gotcha containers, like they tell you, you know, you have a 0.2% chance oh, yeah. of an SSR character anymore. Yeah. Like I can at least understand that if I'm putting my $2 into that machine, there's a solid chance I'm going to pull out like some poopy. Yeah, of course. But Especially the 10 and 12 year olds, like they'll just keep putting money in unknowing, unbeknownst, thinking that like you know eventually a pack will open up and i'll get that character i want or i'll get that player i want and you know you get the lamello ball or the ronaldo yeah. and you're thrilled but they don't realize you know ten thousand dollars is is you know not a sizable chunk of change like i remember <laughs> wanting to buy lego sets that were like 150 200 but at walmart my mom's telling me no and i'm just like why you make money don't you like, <laughs> yeah and i obviously i was a very like you know <laughs> stupid child Clearly, because now I buy seven hundred dollar Lego sets at the age of twenty five. That's beside the point. <laughs> that's beside the point. That's your choice now. But it's your money. Yeah. It's your money. And yeah. where do we where do we draw that line? You know, like I there's arguments that kids do know better because they have access to the internet at any time. You know, they have phones. They can just Google gambling and have a basic understanding of it. But you know, they're they're susceptible to it. And even if they understand what gambling is, they don't maybe understand what gambling addiction is. Yeah. And I think that's kind of, sorry if I'm interrupting, but no, go for it. It's, it's kind of like, and that's where I kind of agree with you in a lot of loot boxes go for the slot machine effect, right? It's, yeah. Oh, I pulled this time. I was so close. So maybe I'll pull again. Right. And eventually it does trick you into thinking or releasing that little bit of dopamine that makes you so happy, right. That you're like, okay, I'll do one more. One more turns to two more, two more turns to four more, and then suddenly you've spent two hundred dollars on loot boxes, like trying to yeah. get the 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 golden Reiner uh, or a Reinhardt skin or something like that. He's got one. He's got. I bought a one hundred dollar elite trainer box for Champions Path to get this Charizard. <laughs> it's a promotional card that's guaranteed in the box at least, but I did get ten other packs of cards trying to get the shiny Charizard. I did not get it, and I subsequently <laughs> ordered more Pokemon cards, but it's the same thing. Yeah. You just proved our point. <laughs> yeah. You can tell by the Snorlax on my couch in the very distance yes, there. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Was that, I friend, have a problem, clearly. Was that friend you were telling us I'm about thinking. you? My money. Yeah. You're not boring money. Yeah. Well, you might be. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I won't throw that on my credit card cards. Yeah. How I restrict myself is like, let me check the ball. Yeah, okay. Do I get groceries this week or am I I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't need to eat. That's it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very, it's definitely a very gray area in terms of whether it's like full on gambling or not. But it's just crazy because even so, I play two K. I do the my team. Um, and when I got the, uh, the Mamba edition, the one with Kobe Bryant, it came with like every week. I get packs, right? So mm-hmm. whatever you sell the stuff you don't have, I've always I've been playing these type of games like when with the NHL when they first came out with the Hockey Ultimate Team. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I totally dropped like a hundred bucks on packs of cards because I was like, this is awesome, right? Get to open all these cool cards and build my team, right? Yeah. Um, and then eventually I'm like, I bought the game. I just enjoy the like you know opening a few packs and then building my team. Um, but I've lucked out. So every year that Ultimate Hunt has come out, I've always pulled something on the first set of packs that I've bought that basically like racks me up to like half a million coins and I can build my team. I never dump anything else. You're lucky. But I also know that, uh, you know, the difference between right and wrong when it comes to gambling and I'm not going to drop four or $500 on loot mm-hmm. boxes or packs of cards, especially uh, with, with EA, they show you like, Oh, you're guaranteed two golds with 80 overall and you're yeah. guaranteed whatever. 2K does the percentages. So it shows you like you're guaranteed zero point, like you were saying, it's actually 0.6% chance of pulling an 85 overall. Well, I know right there, like, why the fuck would I spend $20 with a yeah. 0.2% chance? I might as well go to the casino and put it on black where I have a 50 50, well, not 50 50 chance. Not 50 50. I wouldn't say that, but <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, when I go to the casino, yeah. remind me not to go to a casino yeah. with you. <laughs> You got to count for the double zero and the zero, right? But it's just interesting. Um, And I think uh, that comes down to like the parents too, educating your children on addiction, whether it's with gambling, uh, you know, smoking, alcohol, whatever it can be, like crazy heavy Uh drugs. Um, It's just, yeah, don't do crack. And even, you know, even uh, developers, like put that in your game. Here's the disclaimer. Are you 18 years old? Put your, uh, the age in or whatever it is before you're actually able to, uh, 
to buy anything in game um because you know that your account is linked with your hotmail or outlook whatever it is through uh xbox i'm not sure how they really do it with the, the ps i think just whatever email you have yeah um and your wallet it is but yeah it's just education teach your kids don't drop all this money and if you're going to drop that money get a job and if you want to spend your money on new boxes that's up to you but don't complain about it after when you lose all your money because you're just trying to get skin right so yeah and exactly. i think that's for the i think that's where the biggest pushback is coming from realistically speaking is they don't want these games to be rated e for everyone they will want them to be e uh like I, i'm not sure what the european rating system is because i believe germany has been making the biggest push against loot boxes yeah, and they're yeah. banning uh titles right shift and feel a little bit more pressured um as they think like germany i think outright ban loot boxes if i'm not mistaken um, uh, i know yeah. some places are pushing to have adult only ratings on games with loot boxes because they consider it gambling um so they would have the esrb rating or uh, sorry pal equivalent or anything like that um on the boxes themselves uh they're pushing for disclaimers a bit, uh, about gambling and I mean, it's it's pretty intense just how far people are willing to go to, to campaign against this. And I don't see anything inherently wrong with it. I do agree. Transparency is, is definitely key. We ask transparency of everyone, you know, the developers themselves on uh, if their company is doing crunch or anything like that. That's something we always want to know about delayed games. So I don't see why we wouldn't hold developers accountable for transparency with loot boxes as well. You know, give us the percentiles, make it very obvious, like this is a game of chance. Yeah, you know, it, it's not it's not something to just you buy once and here's your character, call it a day. Yeah. It's it's something that needs heavier disclosures. It's something that needs a little bit more moderation. And I feel like right now, uh, you know, North American laws, more specifically Canadian, I guess, we aren't holding the developers accountable. We're not sitting here and saying, listen, there's clear issues, you know, plenty of Microsoft phone calls, Sony phone calls a day, uh, yeah. parents asking for refunds because their kids uh well, that's another thing, but I'll get to that point in just a moment. I just thought of it now, but you know, I'm, I'm sure Sony and Microsoft are getting tired of getting these phone calls for refunds for you know credit card charges their kids have racked up because they've parents have inadvertently left their credit card on there. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's kind of the biggest culprit. But moving towards that idea, so I actually recently found out um, due to a breach in my security. Thankfully, I had two FA and nothing happened. Uh, most charges from Microsoft and Sony now show up, show up sorry, as recurring payments. So that means if I give my credit card to little Timmy once because he asked to renew his PlayStation Plus membership, that credit card yeah. information, unless he checks it off, will be saved to the console. So unless yeah. I also then put a password to protect any credit card purchases further, which I'm sure they're not exactly making transparent on the systems either. I haven't seen any pop-ups asking no, that. Oh, why would they? Yeah. But, uh, you know, like a little kid's just going to see, oh, my parent's credit card is an option. Click it and be on the way. Like, yeah. you know, and all game, I, thought right, I was, you know, paying $60 to get him back online and playing the game. I didn't think I was going to be cashing out for Ronaldo, but here we are. <laughs> And then the thing, too, is like Microsoft and Sony can have that argument. Well, we do have PSN cards and Xbox cards. Then instead of loading up your uh, credit card, you can you just can go that, buy those. Right? Yeah. So that argument, I, I don't think that argument's ever valid, though, because what no, store I, yeah. in a pandemic okay. is open at 10 p.m. at night and my, you know, my PSN just ran No, I think it, I think it would have been a more valid thing back when they didn't use currency, when they used points. Yeah, yeah. Right, because then at that point, then they're just like, "Well, you can't buy it with money. You have to buy your points card." Points, yeah. My question is, why do they need to keep that credit card info? Why do they need to make sure that my credit card is on file? Is it to make it purchase make purchases easier for me? Because yeah. if that's the case, then that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah. But then you can't really complain or bitch about all the phone calls you're going to get when parents who don't realize their credit card <laughs> info was just saved to that console are getting ten thousand dollar charges. I don't think it's inherently fair to place all of the blame on a pa oh, I can't speak English right now. Sorry. I don't think it's inherently fair to put all of the blame on parents when Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo, because Nintendo did this on the Switch as well, are making it inherently easier before initial setup 
and having a parent go through all the parental controls in advance to, you know, save their credit cards. Why can't I just put my credit card info in once and then you have to request it every time? Yeah. It, it, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. That should just be a no brainer. I wouldn't want my info sitting on any website because if my computer ever got hacked and all my info was saved on walmart.ca, guess where the hacker is going to spend all of my money? Yeah. On walmart.ca. Mm-hmm. That's why think, Walmart doesn't save it. So why does Sony get to save it? I think too, with the whole reoccurring is they want you to forget. So just say you sign up for, we'll say game pass, right? Whatever it is, you get the deal. Yeah. Where it's like a dollar a month. And then they're like, well, here's your dollar a month. But after a month, it's going to be $16. So the casual gamer uh, will be like, oh, cool. I got this for a dollar. Like, well, I access to all these games, blah, blah, one dollar. Mm-hmm. Boom. They put it on, they put their credit card on, it's sitting there. They're like, okay, they don't play. They play once a month, twice a month. Then they're like, oh shit, it's a month over. Oh man, I got charged. There's 16 bucks. And the 16 bucks you ain't going to get back for whether it's, you know, PS Now, yeah. uh, Game Pass or whatever it is. So I think too, it's like you have your developers that are, you know, sleazy in terms of, uh, you know, gambling loot boxes and all that, trying to, to, to gouge kids or whoever it is and pry on uh, people with addictions. And, but then you also have these, you know, the big guys like Xbox and Sony that just leave that in place so that if you do forget, they're making that money regardless. Yeah. And then eventually you just, you're a little fed up. You're not going to be like, hey, uh, I let my month go by. Can I get my money back? They're like, well, no, because if you look at our terms and conditions, that's what you signed up for. So yeah. you're SOL. And I wonder how many like actual parents that, um, you know, go and call uh daily like to xbox and, and sony like hey my 10 year old just racked up 10 20 grand on my credit card um can i get that money back do you think they actually get refunded or no i don't think so probably not yeah I, I it, it so depends either. really i mean like there's there's certain instances where it, it does and does not work i mean again like i i've seen or heard stories of people getting like 300 dollars charges and that gets refunded and they kind of just write it off as a hack Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and if I guess, you know, if you want to argue it that way, you can, but ultimately it's all the power in the terms and agreements are given to Sony, to Microsoft and to Nintendo, uh, to hold the right to refuse that refund. So, yeah. and I mean, if the kid's already blown, like if, if they put the currency in the wallet and haven't spent it, I would imagine that might be something Sony's willing to reverse. Mm-hmm. But if the kid's already bought or whoever has already bought, you know, do the 40 EA ultimate FIFA ultimate team, whatever. I don't play sports games. Really. Uh, <laughs> I can you know, tell packs, they're not, they're not going to do that. There's no, cause then they have to get EA to revert the pack. And, yeah. things. and that, never works. that but, never like, works. Girl. And, and then obviously, you know, I still do think that uh, there's a certain accountability of parents just saying, no, you can't use my credit card. Yes. We'll take you to, you know, local retailer to buy a uh, PlayStation network card or whatever. But what I want to know is if they need to save that credit card info, if it's absolutely mandatory to have that credit card info and Sony and Microsoft will not budge on, you know, switching it off from a one-time payment or switching it from a subscription to a one-time payment, at least make it mandatory. Like it, All of them have the option to pass or protect that field where you click purchase, you click checkout, and then when you click confirm, you have to re-enter your account password. Why is that optional and not on by default? Let's dig into that, boys. Let's look up their uh, ter- <laughs> terms and conditions. I At mean, the end of the day, nobody nobody reads that shit anyway. So I mean, maybe that's, that's why we should read it. <laughs> yeah, we could look at that and we can come up with some of these points to see about the whole uh, refunds and everything. I would I'd really like to know. Uh, maybe we can get somebody from Sony or Xbox on the next podcast. I mean... We'll- We'll charge cool. them sixteen ninety nine for our podcast subscription, <laughs> where they have a where really they have a zero point eight percent chance of getting a cool NX on t shirt. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll have, have microtransactions. No, we don't. Like, where's mine? Like, <laughs> they won't win. It's just it's crazy with the whole loot boxes. Is like it'd be acceptable if the probability of pulling something was higher than. 0.6 percent or 0.8 like if they have a 30 percent chance of getting something and above yeah. then hey like you can kind of justify the five dollar kind of swing pack right or whatever you're doing it's just you just well, don't know right that's where like, more of those pleasing tactics come in because in the case of, of fate grand order because i did dabble in that you know in college um 
they have like, oh, if you buy 10 spins, you're guaranteed one SSR, but you don't know who the SSR is going to be. So you just end up buying the 10 yeah. packs because you're hoping that it's the SSR that you want. It yeah. also doesn't guarantee that it's going to be an actual character. It could just be a, a kind of an, an attachment, right? It could be yeah, a yeah. five star, uh, was it picture? Practically. <laughs> Right, so yeah, it's just yeah. <laughs> they have implemented something that's kind of more on the microtransaction side now. Is if you buy and you use like the material that they use to do spins, if you buy them, you can apply them to a different one that only works for purchased <laughs> items, and then it's guaranteed five star servants or five star something else. Right, but then it's because you paid for it. And so sometimes it works. It's, so, and like, I don't know what, what game you guys are playing there. Maybe that's something that's uh, it's too like, behind in my time or too ahead. Of mobile me. games. You're too old. Too yeah. old. That's it. Yeah. Um, you don't know what head Like the is. whole, like when you're yeah. talking about the whole Lamella Ball and different kinds of. of uh, How much anime do you watch? But it's just crazy because, like, I noticed this year at NHL. <laughs> Is that there's so many different styles of cards. You got your prime times, your icons, you got all the stuff. Same players, higher ratings, and all this, right? So yeah. I can see where a lot of people are uh, kind of pushing back on on some of these developers and, and just the different variations. Because before it used to be, hey, that was your card. Like I remember pulling a uh, a Malkin back, and I want to say like 2016, whatever it was. I forget what year. That was, was a pretty big deal. And mm -hmm. that card was like day one. It was it was going for like one point four million coins. Yeah, and that was the only card. I was the only one that had it, right? Like kind of thing. So it was crazy. So now it's you had you pull something really good. You spend the fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. Like I pulled the I pulled the Vasilevsky this year, and I'm like, oh sweet, this card's eighty six overall, one of the highest goalies overall. I go to see how much it's worth in the uh, the auction house. It's like four thousand coins. So I'm like, why? Oh, because there's seven different variations of Vasilevsky in each one. <laughs> higher right so you're like well what's the point right it's literally the trading card mentality yeah but you know what? i'll give the a credit because uh in the last couple of years they they've done enough in ho uh, hockey ultimate team where you can grind it single player wise or even just grind it and, and gain some packs and things like that when you're playing uh, online as well so, mm -hmm. which is good because before they didn't have that where it was basically almost pay to win if you wanted to build your team. But even then, you have guys that spend thousands of dollars on these teams, and you go and smoke them with your twenty dollars team kind of thing, right? Yeah. Uh, same. Same with with two uh, K because I know we keep picking on these guys, but two K. Same. Same thing with my team. I don't even play online because I kind of suck at NBA um, <laughs> and get smoked for sure. So I don't want to do that because I'll be like, oh, I got to buy more cards. Um, uh, they have a lot of uh, single player. Uh, you know modes that you can just keep gaining vc you keep gaining coins to build your team up and stuff like that yeah yeah it's well, just interesting everyone has their take on it i know mm -hmm. like we i mean we all agree and disagree on certain things but it's just again same same associate uh as an example but um so it, it he had made like three thousand dollars in purchases but i've also watched him like navigate the menus and stuff like that and I can tell you from like experience of like him calling me and saying like, Hey, can you do this on my Xbox really quick? Like I know how to navigate to it in 2k 20. I know how to navigate to the in-store shop, buy a pack and open it better than I can putting one of those characters on his roster. Yeah. Like that's ridiculous. And like, I, I mean, I'm, I don't feel bad for picking on 2k because 2k has been called pretty much a casino game for as long as i can remember like it, that's pretty much mm -hmm. the joke like yeah the entire thing is just a running casino of, of chance and luck you want cool sneakers pull a box you want you know cool characters pull whatever yeah. like open packs that's it i think i've seen him spend more time buying things and opening packs than i actually have seen him play a game. <laughs> crazy eh? It's crazy. So that's that's no, half like, of the fun. No grind. I think. There's no grind these days, yeah. right? You notice that? There are certain games that, I mean, aside from uh, shooters and stuff like that, but in terms of sports games, there's there's not much grind anymore where, you know, I don't know, maybe it's just me. We also, well, that, that's like the Star Wars Battlefront 2 argument back when that first released and had its controversy yeah. with loot boxes and stuff is like, you know, 
it's that you could unlock the characters, but the grind was just so monotonous and, and tedious that it was upsetting that you would, it's just infinitely faster to here's 10 bucks, open a pack. Oh, I got Darth Vader. We're good. Yeah. And that's, that's where like I, my mentality always comes from that. Like I love unlocking characters. I was a huge fan of the time splitters franchise. You would get characters for completing the story. You'd get new characters for completing it on a harder difficulty. You'd get new maps to play. Like, Almost everything was unlockable by just playing other content in the game. Yeah. Obviously, it's mm-hmm. not just going to be handed to me willy nilly. Like, if I want the really cool characters, I got to achieve, you know, gold status in this mini game challenge or whatever. Um, but that, in, to me, was a cool system. Like, uh, Time Splitters is still one of my favorite games. I still go back and play Time Splitters 2 and Future Perfect all the time. Yeah. I love those games. And I have all of the characters unlocked because I have no social life, but the game did that to me. It incentivized me to keep playing it without actually having to put in extra dollars. It's like you paid for this game. How about a challenge instead of giving me your credit card information? Mm-hmm. Obviously, they'd probably prefer my credit card information, but that's a different story. I didn't mind the grind in Battlefront too. Yeah, I didn't do too much of it, but I don't know. I took everyone. Right. Well, even the same with Rainbow Six. There's a bit of a grind to that, trying to get some characters. Absolutely. Oh, I liked it. I just it was a great uh, it was a great shooter. We should actually all play that. Well, and that's that's the, another haven't. system that I was looking at is I would play Rainbow Six Siege any day. By the way, I'm by no means I'm god awful at the game, but I just it's fun. It's yeah. stupid fun, and I will always tell people to play Rainbow Six Siege. But Ubisoft has that incentivizer that works better than just throwing in a bunch of microtransactions. I know they still include microtransactions, but at the very least, like when Warlords of New York was coming out, they dropped the base game to three dollars. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, and that was great. A lot, I, I had a lot of buddies that were like. Oh man, you guys are so far ahead, and it's like, well, you can you can get this it's three bucks, and then we'll help you, you know, we'll help you grind through it, and we'll get you yeah. up, kind of thing. And they did, and they're like, well, it's a really fun game. It's like, yeah, you know, thanks Ubisoft for dropping your games. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, down that that much, and then even then, the Warlords of New York, like with the whole bundle, it wasn't even that expensive either. Mm-hmm. So I think to get the gold edition plus the new DLC as a pre order was like sixty bucks altogether, yeah, which was which great. Was- yeah, huge. And then I, I bought it. I bought the gold edition for like eleven dollars, and figured I'll give it a try. If I like it, I'll pick up Warlords in New York. Uh, unfortunately, my squad stopped playing the game, so I it's very hard for me to want to hit the end game content. Yeah, uh, even have when I have no one to play with. But yeah, there's well, some games. Eh, you win some, you lose some. But I mean, that was a great incentivizer. Same thing. I have like a copy of Siege on every system because they mm-hmm. keep putting the deluxe edition, which gives you like all the year one through I think four. Yeah, I think it's one, two, three. Three, yeah. Characters that they released for twelve dollars Play Store. Um, because for some reason I thought that you play was cheaper than Steam and then I wanted it back on Steam. So I bought both copies. <laughs> well, okay. I have it for Xbox and PlayStation. Like I have it for everything. I did that with uh what was it, Destiny 2. I got it at E B a few years back. It was like four ninety nine. And then uh played the shit out of it with some buddies. And yeah. then now it's on Game Pass with all the DLC pretty much on there. I think it is. It's pretty it's much it's it's free to play, and then the DLC is on Game Pass right now. Yeah, yeah. Of and then, which I'm okay with that. That was a smart way to go. If you're going to keep charging for DLC after that point, you might as well just make it straight up free to play. Yeah. Um, Those so are the passes that I miss. The expansion passes where you yeah. spend fifty dollars and you get four between three and five, usually like ten to fifteen dollar DLCs, like. Yeah. The very first DLC I ever paid for, any online microtransaction I ever paid for, was, if I can recall correctly, probably Operation Anchorage for Fallout 3. And yeah. I do not regret that purchase. That was like little, however old I was in 2008 when that game came out. And then the DLC, I think, subsequently came out in 2009. It was I was elated. It was so oh, cool yeah. that I could get a new part of the game downloaded to my console for $10. <laughs> And like a whole new storyline, a bunch of armor that was super overpowered. Like the Chinese stealth armor is is just insanely broken in Fallout yeah. Three. But like that's that's the structuring that I like. Like let me pay for the content. If it's not very long, then I'm just going to tell you that it's not worth you know it's buying. Worth but at the very bucks. least, I have to make the initial investment. And at that point, I can also decide if I want to throw you extra dollars because obviously I'm going to buy the DLC if I like the game. If yeah. I don't like the base game, you got my eighty dollars. You know, fair's fair, the game's poo-poo, but I'm not going to buy your DLC. Yeah. yeah. Cyberpunk. 
That could reminds me of <laughs> that reminds me of uh, Borderlands Two, and all of those DLCs were great. Great game. It was a great addition to that. Um, actually, I should probably go back and play it. Um, play even them. they we're had, even they again. had like we're not doing that again. <laughs> it was fun. That's it how was I got fun until all the achievements. Died of oxygen in the prequel. Yeah, in no, the pre-sequel. the pre-sequel is not the not best. Like the but, I need to make it through Borderlands 3 first. Uh, yeah, no. I've gotten through it, I think. I'm like two hours into that. Yeah, I think so I, I finished the campaign. Um, you guys just need to get Playstations. Hmm? Soon. Soon. You just need to get Playstations. Soon, soon, soon. But yeah, no. Well, it's, 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 let's, uh, let's go into the last question because we kind of... Yeah, we kind of started like going crazy. Um, so if you had the choice of altering the way microtransactions and loot boxes are uh, to make them better, to make them you know, more appealing, that uh, they don't look like gambling or whatever it is, how would you change them now in gaming? Um, Brandon, I know you're talking about how the, you know, the old school expansion passes. Um, yes. I think that was fantastic because when I first started playing online gaming, whether it was like Gears or whatever it was, it was like that. Here's your expansion. It's an extra whatever it was. And you got maps, you got skins, you got everything rolled into one price. And it was like the whole gear or even more, whatever they, they did. So um, I'm definitely all for going to that old school route with the whole expansions like you were talking about because it's, it just makes it easier for people to uh, to kind of, you know, here's an extra 20 bucks. Why not? Yeah. Instead of here's an extra 80 and then here's an extra 100. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, I have a 6% chance of getting whatever. Well, here's another $200, right? Um, so I'll let you guys go on that bad way. That question as, there. As much as I don't as much as I don't like to encourage digital, um, I will be the first to vocalize that I hate digital only content because you don't mm-hmm. truly own it, but that's a different story. I think the games that should make the jump to being digital only titles are sports games. 100%. Yeah. yeah I hear good. every year from reviewers, from people who play the game regularly, basic fans, that there is no changes outside of roster updates, realistically speaking. I don't know if they change engines. I don't know what happens behind the scene. I am not a game developer, so do not quote me if I'm speaking out of term on that. But I think what they realistically could do is get rid of the loot box structuring and just host as much as I also don't want to admit this, like uh, battle pass events. You know, get a a cheaper tiered battle pass structure or something that's just not overwhelming to the point. Like Call of Duty's battle pass out of whack. But if it was something catered more towards Rainbow Six Sieges where, you know, I get like a a retro jersey or something like that out of it for, you know, the Boston Bruins, that I'd be okay with. And then only charge for the roster updates. If all you're really doing is just adding players and adjusting their stats, why am I paying $80 for that every year? Charge me $40 and keep it just a digital game where I only have to download, you know, here comes the update. And then shortly after the update rolls out NHL 22, all I have to do is pay for the key to unlock the content that was in the last update. Yeah. And I'm golden. I have the roster updates. I have all the characters you know, all the players who are traded independently or, or in the off season, that it's makes there, much yeah. more sense to me. And you're cutting out again, I, as much as I don't want to encourage anyone not buying physical copies of games, please buy your games physically. You know, you're cutting out the extra costs of production. You're cutting out all the extra costs of printing the CD, shipping them with all those costs gone. You can definitely afford to lower the price of your roster update you know, patches. Yeah. Realistically speaking, that's that's going to be the best structure for them. In terms of non-sports titles, I want expansion passes back. Even yeah. if it goes to a more microscopic degree where like they work on maybe a two-hour quest line for a week and it gets added into The Witcher 3 for three or four bucks. If it's a good game and I already like it, I know I'm going to commit to buying that. Three dollars for an extra two hour experience of a game, especially if it's newer or you know fresher content, maybe cut content that they originally couldn't include that they can include in the uh, you know in their downtime or, or when they're not effectively working on their next game or, or patching anything. I'll pay for that, no problem. If it's a game I'm passionate about, I will 110 percent pay for that and play. Either that or at the very least, switch the battle passes to a free to play system. 
Let me play your game for free. Let me try it out. If I like it, I'll pay for the battle right, pass, sure. and I will. You can take my dollars that way. Yeah, I think that's a fair system. I think that's justified. You know, Fortnite does it, and Fortnite does well with their battle passes. Fortnite always keeps it interesting. I've never played Fortnite, so I mean, if I'm if either of you have, and I'm saying something, I've been, factually I have not incorrect, played it, correct. so I can't correct you. <laughs> interesting. Um, yeah, they're always updating, and it's always. You know, they almost got their hooks in me because I'm a huge Keanu Reeves fan and I love the John Wick series. The trilogy is probably my favorite pieces of cinema in existence. I almost started playing Fortnite just to get the John Wick skin way back when that came out. Mm -hmm. And I, I would have went crazy for it. I don't think I'd still be playing Fortnite today, even if I did start playing back then. But I think that's a great system. Anyone can play this game. But you can pay for better content if you want it. You can pay for, you know, cool skins. You can get all this crazy stuff. And their promotional stuff works too. Like they had that Galaxy skin for the Samsung Galaxy, like the new Note that was coming out way back yeah. then. That was a couple of years yeah. ago. They had the Mary Mint pickaxe that was going crazy. Like it's easy to make money that way. Yeah. You know, why yeah. charge me for the game at all if you could just monetize the rest of it? And I know that sounds awful because that, that really does. At, at no point in time should the entire game be monetized. But I don't want to be paying an upfront cost if I have to then buy the rest of the game in pieces. Yeah, I don't. That I don't think. I don't think sense. Fortnite does it in terms of uh, pay to win either. It's all cosmetic. Uh, Correct. Cosmetic um, features, which is. I fine. remember when I was on, on PS3. Um, I used to be obsessed with Uncharted 3's multiplayer. I really liked mm -hmm. it. It felt very close to Gears of War because I was huge on Gears of War 2's multiplayer on the 360. Um, Uncharted 3 just kind of felt like a good transition for me while I'm on PlayStation's ecosystem instead of on my 360's ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And at one point, all of the items that you could unlock in the game for multiplayer, which were customizable, you know, like a new beanie, a new sweater for your uh, custom avatar character that you can design and stuff, uh, as well as unlockable weapons that had attachments that you can't equip to the customizable guns. They had uh, preset templates similar to blueprints in COD, or you could just get the base weapon, but sometimes certain attachments aren't available on the customization. They're only available on that preset weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, they released almost all of that content. The beanies uh, started having abilities like, you know, increase accuracy with a penalty, though. You would decrease your reload speed, hypothetically speaking. Um, they monetized that. Instead of keeping it locked behind these grand achievements and having to get certain treasures and stuff, mm -hmm. you just buy it for a dollar. And I think it, that's a little bit more predatory, obviously, but because, you know, it does affect your character stats, but at least they included a positive and a negative. It's not like you were buying a hat and all of a sudden your accuracy is 25% better and you're just better at the game. You kind of have to tailor it to your trade-off. You know, you could essentially buy things that you could still unlock in game. They didn't eliminate the ability to unlock these items. Yeah. But you could buy them if you wanted them right away and build a better loadout faster. It was just a fast tracking system. And they weren't expensive. You could buy a B for 99 cents. You could buy a whole outfit for three bucks. Like, I don't mind doing that because if I think a hat's really cool and I want to wear it, I'll pay the 99 cents for it, especially if mm -hmm. I'm going to be playing that multiplayer game for a long period of time. And it works great in third-person shooters because you're actively looking at your avatar. I yeah, don't so understand character customization person. in a first-person only game. <laughs> Where you pop. can't actually yeah. do that. <laughs> I want to look at how cool my corporal outfit is. And all I can do is stare look straight in down into the abyss. That's all I can do. And, and if you stare straight I down, mirror, sometimes your hair doesn't mess. clip in. It just goes to disappear. I'm bald. It doesn't make sense. Stop putting customization. It doesn't work. Like I don't like it. Anyway. Uh, there's there's smaller systems that can work and I think can work much more effectively than what's going on right now. And a lot of things to me, I think, would be better off done for starters with lowering a lot of the price points that we're seeing here. At no point in time should you be offering me to spend $100 on in-game digital-only content. Why am I paying for JPEGs? <laughs> Why am I paying for right. animations? Yeah. That's insane. Because it's that is ridiculous. Stupid. Somebody else is buying it. There's it's because buying it. people buy it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, That's all it is, right? I there should never be an option to spend more than a hundred dollars on in-game currency, and people need to stop spending a hundred dollars on in-game currency. I understand if it's your waifu. I understand if it's your lamello ball or your <laughs> you know vasilevsky or whoever. Yeah. But please, for the love of God. Save your money. Like, call ING Directs and save your money. 
called Geico. Get the Nine, Jenny, more tangerine. Come yeah, on. I, know. I, I think ten you know, percent or more on car insurance. insurance. Well, <laughs> anyways, it's it's just please like we need to see lower you know lower cost to microtransactions. They're not supposed to be the entire game. They're supposed to be supplementary to the game. And I think that caveat to microtransactions has been long since mm-hmm. lost. Uh, especially when it comes to devs making money. I also wouldn't mind personally paying more upfront for a game if game prices went up $90 or $100. Gaming is one of the few industries that has not been, infe- uh, sorry, gaming is one of the few industries that has not been affected by inflation over the years. Game prices have essentially gone up to match inflation versus overall cost, like mm-hmm. $60 in 2000 versus you know $80 today. It matches the consistent dollar, but it has not properly inflated. Yeah. And that's that's huge. I'd rather pay $100 for a full game where I could just unlock everything with some dedicated grinding sessions on the weekends. I don't want to buy loot boxes. I really don't. And that's from someone who has bought loot boxes. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind paying that. I wouldn't even mind paying $100 or whatever. At least like with you're Pokemon saying. cards, I have a physical item. Like, I can yeah. show you. You, know, yeah, you can like show Charizard. You show the Charizard. Like, yeah. If you come Shoot. over and I tell you check out this sweet, you know, purple Reinhardt skin in Overwatch, you're gonna look at me like I'm like stupid <laughs> or dumb. And see your guy. Did you did hell. you pay for at that? At least I can just be like, yo, check this out. Check this out. But I got for the only dollars. time Charizard. <laughs> The only time you see your character is if somebody kills you. And, and at that point, you don't want to see his yeah, character. Like, like, oh my god, it's stupid. He's dead. <laughs> um, I think I would say if I could change microtransactions, I would probably limit it to only cosmetic. If you're going to put something in that changes the game, even like a 99 cent beanie, provide a method to get it without paying money. Right? If it's gonna, If it's got to be a play the game for 30 hours or spend, five dollars i would much rather play the game and try to unlock it myself because then that's me achieving something it's yeah, almost like how reason why you bought the game well yeah it's it's, reason why you bought the game to play it right exactly and it comes down to the same thing and i guess you can relate it to xbox achievements too because at some point they did mean, they didn't mean something at some point there were difficult ones besides just play the game 40 times yeah yeah okay. well, Play, play like for Mass Effect. Play through. Was it on insanity without changing the difficulty, which is crazy, right? But I don't know if they if they came out and said, okay, you could do that, but if you spent five dollars, then insanity would feel like normal, right? It really kind of takes away that experience. Yeah, it takes the fun out of it. Yeah, hundred percent. It's just like, and now you're up in the time, well, the times. The like times. It's like, it's changed. Well, it's, it's, when I started gaming online, there was no, or even playing games, there was no DLC. There was none of that shit. You grinded the game, you you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish. You beat the game, you, you did whatever, and you got your skins, you got whatever it was. But I think it's it's starting to get, it's starting to be okay now. But like, I would say the last couple of years with microtransactions and loot boxes, it got really bad because of, because of Fortnite. I think kind of pioneered it, and then you've got your EA, you got everybody else trying to cash in on it too, and rightfully so. You have a business, you want to make your money. I don't fault you for that, but then again, you are taking advantage of people that have addictions or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's getting better now, and I think in the next few years, you're going to see video game prices go up, but you're going to be offered more in terms of expansions or DLC all rolled into one, which would be yeah. sweet because if you pay that extra ten, twenty dollars, and they're you know, whether it's Bungie or Activision, whoever it is saying, hey, uh, you're spending $100, but we're giving you content until we stop making content for this game. So, yeah. So anyway. I'll take content any day. Give me new yeah, story, give me new quests, yeah. new enemies. Like, yeah. just make it make it good. That's it. That's yeah. all I ask. If it's a new experience, just, I'm, I'm for it. Yeah. It's just if you're going to be paying 10, 5, 10 bucks for just a shirt, like it's pointless. Mm-hmm. But... Like we're saying, people are buying them, so these companies are going to keep putting it out, right? So yeah. a shirt should be like fifty cents, fifty cents, yeah, a drops. dollar at most. Like, yeah, and that's 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 kind of the gimmick, though. Is like if you're playing the game for the first hour and you see in the shop they got a really cool armor set that's ten bucks, you know, and you got the game on sale for thirty, so you didn't even pay full price for it. 
and then three hours and you don't like it, well, now you just spent $30, you know, or sorry, $40 based off of the numbers provided uh, on a game that you ended up not liking three hours in because you liked it for an hour and saw a really cool armor for 10 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd yeah, be less uh, disappointed myself if I spent one dollar and it was thirty-one total dollars. But you know, it's going to be I, interesting uh, to see the direction that everything goes now. Whether or not these lawsuits go through with EA or whoever it is, um, and see where maybe we can touch back on this within the year or next year yeah. and see how certain games have come out with DLC or expansions or microtransactions that we can compare to previous years. Uh, and see how it goes. But uh, quick question before we kind of uh, tail off and end and this episode. Uh, going forward, do you think microtransactions in the next five years will be around or will they be gone? Well, they'll still be here, without a yeah. doubt. There's no way they're going anywhere. I think they might be In worse. some capacity, they might change, they'll evolve, but they will most certainly still be here. Yeah, for sure. There's no way they're, they're going away. It's It's... An easy money maker, especially for vulnerable people, and it kind of sucks to say it that way, but it uh, you can see it. If you spend two hundred dollars on your parents' credit card, right, that's two hundred dollars in the pockets of the developers. Yeah, so yeah. I think they'll stay, but I think like how they're starting to do more battle passes or whatever it is, it's going to change. Yeah. It won't be microtransactions. It won't be a loot box. It'll just be. It'll be a larger like uh, content pack for you. Yeah. At around thirty, forty bucks, whatever it is. So it's still going to be there, but it won't be as extreme as as how it is uh, now. And and people just well, people will still blow their money, but there's no way it's going away. Uh, yeah. We're going to start seeing bits of games getting cut out, and just the games will be castrated, and we'll have to pay for new sections. Yeah, sit in paywalls. We'll walk up. It's going to be interesting. Asura's Wrath did it right in whatever year that game released. I don't remember off the top. Mm -hmm. well, Neither of you played it, did you? No. That's it, boy. That's it for this one. Um, <laughs> unless you guys want to have something else to add. but No. No, I think... I, I could be here for hours just telling you. <laughs> about my don't do it. I don't I know, know how long you want to go, James. <laughs> the thing is, is like, why spend $100 on cosmetics when you can just buy another game? Why spend a hundred dollars? You could be giving us a hundred dollars, and that'll probably yeah. effectively take you further than that little <laughs> animation you just paid for. We'll, we'll actually buy Pokemon cards, and like, I might be able to pay <laughs> rent. Yeah. pay rent. Yeah, that's an internet bill or whatever it is right now. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, anyways, that's it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in, everybody, to the Level Up Podcast. Stay tuned for the next episode whenever we release it. It'll be another juicy topic like today. I'm James from NXL with Brandon and Nick here. So take it easy, everybody.